Hey there everybody, Mazarok here, and it is early in the morning, just waking up, and we have a bunch of tuning going on. We have a lot of maintenance happening today, because they're uh, introducing the mobile auction house into the game after today, so you might notice a bunch of auctions get cancelled. I think the whole market's getting reset on a bunch of shit. It's going to be rather pleasant, uh, but we have trinket tuning, raid tuning, dungeon tuning. I figured it'd be nice to kind of, you know, go over everything and talk about all of this a little bit and how this is going to change the game for us a little bit. Before we get started, please like, comment, subscribe, all that fun stuff. I cannot believe how fast we blew through 3k and how just quickly we're gunning towards 4k thank you so much everybody i am flabbergasted by all the support thank you to everybody in the community discord as well for all the support and help you i cannot do this without any of you thank you so much there is a link to that discord link down below if you have any questions about anything that i talk about here uh, throughout the video or any other you know, tanking questions in general or just want to come hang out and with a bunch of metalheads and talk some music and stuff you know come on by hang out uh, there's a Twitch link down below. I stream. I am going to be streaming tonight once the game goes live. And uh, there's a Patreon link if you wish to support me directly. Thank you very much. And let's get into it. So the first set of tuning is to... Uh, we're going to go to the raids first, actually. Because this is the most simplest one. 5% health nerf and faded heroic and uh, mythic difficulties. That's just nice. No, that's, that's just nice. <laughs> uh, I, did, I didn't find... So 5% Heroic, I we didn't find in Sanctum of Domination that it was too bad. Uh, Sylvanas was the first one where we were like, okay, our DPS actually matters here. Like, okay, we gotta pump it. It took, like, the first time we had just treated it like just, we YOLO'd the whole thing. And it was pretty good. Now I do understand, like, we got some really, really good players in our, in our raid group and stuff like that. And they were just pumping. But, like, we were just kind of like, you know fall off the edge here oh it doesn't matter we got this and then all of a sudden it's like oh no we don't have this we do need people alive and we need to pay attention so five percent is going to be nice but i mean i don't think it's going to be too too bad but i think it's going to do a lot of good stuff for the raid groups and things like that then we have warlords of draenor trinket tuning enforcers stun grenade this versatility is increased by 96 percent now i'm not 100 percent sure if this is the on use or the just the static stat that gives that uh this gives it to you but i am pretty sure it's the static stat because if i'm not mistaken the versatility on this seems low compared to the primary stat that you get from other trinkets so a versatility of 96 percent would be upwards to about 200 plus on my warrior and things like that so i have one at 298 right now so this would be like a this would make it incomparable with a primary stat that you were getting. So let's say you were getting strength on this and not versatility as your main stat with a with a versatility on use effect. The at that eye level, the amount of strength that you would get would be more towards that two hundred and fifty mark or whatever have you not. So this is probably going to be a ninety six percent increase to versatility, which is absolutely fine. Fine, that's huge verse. Huge verse. So if you are a user of the Enforcer Stun Grenade, rejoice. We have a 17% intellect to, and this is another reason why I think it's not the only use effect, is this, these are both intellect and agi. Uh 17%, so uh, if you have a Flesh Render's Meat Hook, which I know a couple of people that do and really, really like it because it does give big haste on demand for every two minutes, a 17% increase to intellect and then we have a 17 percent increase in agility on kira's or kyra's adrenal injector which is the big old mastery boost trinket uh that for every two minutes so these are really really nice uh i think the enforcer stun grenade versatility bump is just crazy nice then we're gonna go over to lower karazan and iron dock nerfs everybody's been screaming for uh <laughs> for nerfs to lower Kara. And Iron Docks too has been tricky, and there's a lot of mobs there that just hit like bricks. So let's uh <laughs> let's go over these. Uh Nightmare Clouds now despawn more quickly after the Nathrazim infiltrators are captured. This is gonna be nice, especially in things like Grim Rail Depot. Shadow Phlegm damage increased by 150%, travel speed reduced by 100 
And radius reduced to uh, four yards. I'm not sure what the shadow phlegm is. I think that might be like the purple swirly on the ground with anathrazine. Uh, I've never had much to worry about this. And judging by the travel speed reduction, things like that, I still think this is just going to be a sidestep and avoid and don't have a problem with it. So we'll see. We do have a nerf to Grimrail Depot. The Grimrail's technicians, 50,000. I thought it was 30,000. Or that's, no, 30,000 is Mechagum, the Gigavolt cast. 50,000 volts, all right, yeah. This is what happens when they have too many of the, how many volt casts we got. Increased to 3.5 seconds, which was 2.5 seconds. This is just a nice little uh, nerf to the start of the dungeon. Uh, there's a lot of things to kick there, because these guys also do the activate, which is kickable, so... Uh, always something you really, you absolutely want to kick and move forward with and things like that. Iron Docks. Charging Slash is now only cast by Gromkar Foot Soldiers. This is huge. Man, I have been seeing people just get annihilated from not kind of stacking in and being close enough. Gromkar's Foot Soldiers Charging Slash damage reduced by 35%. So this isn't going to mean much for tanks, but all of the range players that don't stay within the, the minimum distance of that uh, char the charge or whatever, um, we have noticed it doesn't really affect melee that much. Uh, so we think it's just kind of uh, if you're within eight, if you're away or eight yards or further. <laughs> sorry, words are hard this morning. Uh, this was trucking people last night. Ogron's Laborer's Thundering Stop damage reduced by 25%. Yeah, like, this didn't affect me much as a tank, but I noticed he does that stomp, and, like, three of my DPS are losing 50% of their health. Thunderlord's Wrangler's Throw damage is now reduced uh, by armor. Is now reduced by armor. What? Thunderlord Wrangler is now reduced by armor. Oh, okay, so armor, yeah. So, this here, so the Thunderlord Wrangler does this throw ability, and it would just... Not give a crap about anybody's armor. If this thing trucked, uh, like it, yeah. So this is, and, and this is a, a very good targeted nerf, right? It's not that you necessarily have to like just take the numbers and just yank them all down, but this is one thing that it affects all players. It affects all players well, and it just it works. Like that's a very good targeted nerf. I like this. Rampaging Clefos health is reduced by fifteen percent. Yeah, this is this is one thing that I think is going to make it more in line, because the Clefos the Clefos don't really do that much. Like they are a mob you have to watch out for. Yes, but honestly, they were just chonky monkeys, man. They were huge. For uh, huge just HP bars that you had to whittle down. So this is going to be really, really nice. And I think they're going to drop a lot faster. Especially now that we're going into a tyrannical week. Uh, fix And they also resolve an issue where the enemies would fail to cast abilities in specific locations within their area. Uh, we all know what this is. Uh, this is uh, the third, the second boss of <laughs> Iron Docks where people were cheesing it in the corner. Can't do that no more, guys. <laughs> Return to Karazhan Lower. Yeah, this is... This is chonky. Arcane Warden's Volatile Charge Damage reduced by 40%. Huge. The Skeletal Usher's, Usher's Flashlight Damage reduced by 20%. Uh, the damage on this hurt a little bit, but it wasn't too bad. Uh, but what was hurting here was the Usher's uh, Health reduced by 25%. This is really, really good because these guys just had so so much health it was absolutely unreal and then they would just start rocking your tank with punch take it or whatever it is and this just sucked spectral patrons uppercut damage reduced by 20 percent very good love to see that these guys are kind of a little bit everywhere so you want to watch out phantom cruise hammer down now has a 1.5 second cast time which was instant and its damage taken increases by 25% which was an increase in damage taken by 25% was 50 so this hammer down was basically instant and gave you a 50% damage taken debuff and it just oh man it hurt <laughs> like things these things hurt uh there's the amount of things in here that truck your tank are actually pretty crazy resolve an issue that caused uh blood death knights dancing rune weapons to strike unintended targets on blood boils through floors this was a z-axis bug with the new tier set so this is a this is definitely a nice fix good for blood death knights 
I haven't been into a lower with on a blood, my, my blood DK yet, so that's very, very good for them. Cogleston's Dent Armor now has... Also, this is the Beautiful Beast. The Cogleston's Dent Armor now has a 1.5 second cast time, which was instant. Very, very good. Silver Fork's Bloody Jab initial damage reduced by 20%. Yeah, these Silver Forks hurt, man. They hurt. Uh, the Holy Bulwark is uh, re absorb reduced by 10% on Maiden of Virtue. Fantastic change. Really, really good. At Atuman? Atuman? The Huntsman Intangible Presence damaged by 50%. If I'm not mistaken, this was... This is the debuff. Yeah, that debuff was nasty, man. Was just nasty. Very, very good. Awesome. So those are all the changes to lower. Honestly, I think these are very, very good changes. I still think a lot of people are having problems with the pug, uh, with not with pugs, but with the trash in lower because we don't know what to kick yet. And there are some things that you absolutely need to kick, like Oath of the Fealty on some of the trash in there. Absolutely needs to get CC'd, kicked, whatever. There's another, uh, I can't, Servitude, something of Servitude. All I remember is seeing Servitude and remember that has to get kicked. Uh, there's some stuff that, uh, a lot of good purges. Blood Elves in this dungeon are absolutely huge for purging, for Arcane Torrent, you know, that big group purge. A lot of things that you really, really want to just kind of get rid of and things like that. So I think right now the problem with Lower Care is a lot of people don't know the mechanics outside of do do too big damage um but this is this is really really important to kind of get used to get to knowing return to upper karazan wrathguard flame bringers cleave and strike damage reduced by 20 percent yeah they, i mean that most of the time i'm skipping this anyway <laughs> i'm 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 just skipping this. Wrathguard Flamebringer will no longer cast Slide. These are huge. Those Flamebringers, those are the ones that I uh, like on the fire floor, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, like the one where the floor lights up with fire and you gotta not be in the fire. Like that, yeah. Uh, good changes. Although I think the the way we overcame this when we did pull him, I don't pull him anymore because he's part of it. Like, there's just so much trash in there that's worth an stupid amount of percent that like you can skip half the dungeon and still be fine uh and we were opting to skip him with uh invis pots or shroud just to go right to medivh like because you can just go right to the evocation boss uh curator and could just go right to medivh without fighting anything like because there's just there's almost no point in fighting this <laughs> you'll easily get your percentage elsewhere uh but I had everyone stack in melee, and I noticed he wasn't doing the slide. I think it might be tied to his charge. I'm not sure. But yeah, so that's the way we were getting through that. Shade of Medes. Guardian Image's Shimmer damage reduced by 25%. Nice little targeted nerf there on Medeev. Uh Mana Devour. Energy, energy Discharge damage reduced by 30%. Yeah, uh, yeah, I can see that. That's pretty good. Uh, invigorating Fish Dick cast time increased to 2 seconds was 1.5 seconds. Yeah... I'm okay with this. I really am okay with this. Like, if you hit a global, and especially as a tank, like, I try to get all of these. I really, really do. But sometimes, like, he starts casting it, but you don't realize, and you hit the global, you hit your global, and by the time your global comes back up, you're just that point, like, that hair away from being able to cast your shockwave or intimidating shout or whatever, and it goes off. And unfortunately, you can't trust pugs to CC. So it, it's just kind of that kind of always felt bad. That 0.5 seconds is really going to give you like a full global, even if you're behind, which is just going to make pugging this a lot better. I find for organized groups, this is never really a problem. Most of the people have their CC rotation down and their stun, stun rotation down and things like that for this not to happen in organized groups. So that's fine i mean it's it's still a good for them but especially for pug groups they, those fish sticks can get out of hand but these are some pretty big targeted nerfs i think this is going to make karazan lower a lot more manageable i'm still not pulling any ushers if i can get away with it i just don't want to plain and simple i don't like them i have a death skip route that i've been working on uh i timed a 15 with it last night unfortunately some pugs made it a lot more difficult and had to get me to adjust things on the fly um 
a lot of weird little stuff like that to try and just get get everything down but these are some good targeted nerfs and i like these a lot but the thing with like i said with lower is yes the trash hurts but there's a lot of things that absolutely need to get kicked in there aoe stuns in this dungeon are huge if you're a warlock and you're not using shadow fury in there you are not helping your group at all like uh the, Anything with a, a group stun like that. Uh, it's, I'm just I, That's the first one that comes to mind because I've played so much Warlock. Uh, but, I mean, if you're a warrior with Intimidating Shout and not using it, uh, anybody with an AoE stun like that, this is so huge. Uh, Havoc, Chaos Nova, there we go. Now my brain's starting to work. I'm starting to think of them. AoE stuns in this dungeon are absolutely huge. Big stops. Uh, and that those do make the trash mobs just a lot better. Um... But yeah, no, so that's it. That is what it is. We got a long maintenance today, eight hours, uh, but lots of fun stuff. I'm going to be uh, working with the stun grenade a little bit more. I'm currently still using it on my prop warrior. And somebody was asking me in stream last night if it's good or not. And my answer for the stun grenade for tanks is for prot warrior i'm going to say it is good because it lines up with banner every time both have a two minute cooldown you pop banner you pop that you are blowing things up but it's not really used defensively and more offensively think of it like an iqd right like every three minutes you pair it with your big cooldown and you just blast it this kind of works the same way in a smaller version, but you literally have it for every banner. If the cooldown on Stun Grenade was any different, so if it was a minute and a half or two and a half minutes, I it would I would it would no longer really be that good. Like that's quite li the time the cooldown on this of two minutes is perfect. And I noticed that my DPS went up about 2k overall pairing this with my banner every single time. So that's where I think it's really, really good. But if you're not having a constant thing to pair it with, it's kind of going to lose a lot of value because it's going to desync and things like that. And usually you want primary stat over secondary stat anyway for most, uh, for pretty much every tank. And even the secondary stat that you do want, it tends to not be versatility first. Like that's not your prio. But uh, if you can if you can pair this with something reliably every time, this can be a very very good trinket. But aside from that, thank you very much. Happy tanking, and and you guys enjoy your guys' day. Bye.